Ooh, back already. Okay, let's get started with part two of our video lecture for day four. So we're going to shift gears and talk about segregation in the United States. Um, segregation and public accommodation is the first thing that we're going to talk about. We're going to start with the Supreme Court case, Plessy versus Ferguson. You guys should already know this from when we talked about Reconstruction, all right? Plessy versus Ferguson is known as the, say it with me, separate but equal ruling. Very good. Now, for example, some of the places that had to be separated were movie theaters, restaurants, libraries, parks, transportation services, restrooms, you name it, it was separated. Now, where is this pretty much happening? In the South, right? In the South between whites and African Americans, and in the West between whites and people of Asian descent. Is it happening in the North? In some pockets, in some areas, so like maybe in places like Kentucky, um, southern parts of Ohio, Indiana in parts, uh, yes, this is happening, but not if you're talking about the Northeast, places like New York, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, places like that. Jim Crow laws were also introduced. Remember, we talked about Jim Crow already as well. Jim Crow was a song, um, which then turned into a set of laws, um, which were surrounded around the black codes. Um, these laws established separate facilities for whites and blacks across the South. And if you were seen to be breaking these laws, you could be put in jail. Or it was enforced by groups such as the Ku Klux Klan. Often there was simply no accommodation for African Americans at all. So, yes, they're supposed to have a separate school, um, but nothing was actually given to them. So, no one's really enforcing these, right? The federal government has a lot of other things going on, poverty in the United States, um, figuring out what to do in the 1950s, post-World War II. We have the Cold War going on. Um, so no one's actually going down in the South and saying, well, let me see this school that you built for African Americans. No one's checking on it. So a lot of times, white Southern cities who didn't have the finances just wouldn't build any separate accommodations. The facilities for African Americans were notably inferior. And this, again, goes to the, the governments in that area. Well, who's in charge of enforcing this? These different cities are in charge, and what they need to do is they have to allocate funds. So they allocate a lot of the money to white schools or to white libraries, and nothing to the colored or for African-American schools or libraries. Because do you think the government that's in charge, which is predominantly all white, really cares whether or not they get the same resources as them? Absolutely not, all right? And in fact, they want to hold them back. So this is a huge problem. Segregation in schools was probably the biggest thing, and it's going to be the biggest battle um, that African Americans and groups like the NAACP face. School segregation had been established in almost every southern state, along with some northern and western states. Now again, think about it. In the north and the south, Yes, it's probably white and African American. In the West, yes, African Americans are uh, grouped into this, but it's also any Asian immigrant. All right? And so you see this distinction. This is why they start using the term color, because it wasn't just for African Americans. It was any minority group that was of a different race or a different skin color uh, than whites. Southern states spent far more on white schools than on African American schools. Um, and again, this shouldn't surprise you based on what we know about the government and the Dixiecrats and the people that were in charge wanted to bring back that, you know, Confederate ideology into the South in the 1950s. Teachers in black schools got lower salaries and worked uh, under more difficult conditions. You know, you're talking about schools that lack maybe heat or air conditioning or proper books or maps or anything like that. All right. And so these teachers really had to go out on their own. They had to fund their own classrooms. They had to do their own things. And that's a struggle. That's really hard when they have to do that. Say hi. Hey, what's up, bud? All right. Go get your chips. All right. White schools have bus systems. Um, while many African-American students and other minority students had to walk to school every single day. So imagine that disadvantage. You know, imagine you live 10 miles away. You live five miles away, whatever it may be. But you have to walk to get your education, then walk to get home. You're talking about maybe sometimes an hour walk, 30-minute walk, 45-minute walk. So sometimes it just wasn't worth the extra effort for a lot of minority students to actually go to school. They were just like, hey, you know, they're setting up all these obstacles, and 
By the time we actually get there and have the opportunity to learn, I'm exhausted. I don't have the resources and the materials, and then I have to come back home. And so it's a, it's a struggle for a lot of people that are minorities to get an education. What white society is trying to do in the South is create all these barriers, and they're just hoping that these minority students are going to give up along the way so that they don't have to step in and stop the schooling altogether. Segregation and housing, okay? Um, so we went from schooling to now homes. Um, two main factors for segregation when it came to housing. De facto segregation and de jure segregation. De facto segregation uh, was established by practice and custom rather than law. So de facto means there's no law saying that you can't live in this part of the town, but based on custom, um, tradition, Minorities don't live here. So, for example, you know, there's some parts of the South that would say, well, on this side of the railroad tracks, on the east side of the railroad tracks, only white families live. And on the west side of the railroad tracks, only minorities live. And you guys might think that's crazy, but really, up until the 1990s, it was still like that in a lot of southern towns, especially a lot of southern towns that were still deep-rooted in a lot of cultural tradition. Um, I mean, heck, guys, we talked about places in Tennessee, places in Mississippi, um, in Georgia that still didn't have integrated school dances in the 2000s. So imagine the 1950s when they're only two generations removed from Reconstruction. There's a lot of people that are still practicing this because that's what they grew up with. You know, their grandparents lived in a town that was all white or segregated. Their parents grew up. They grew up. And so that's what they're going to enforce with their kids and their family. De jure segregation is segregation by law. So that means there is a law saying you cannot do this, all right? And you can get in trouble if you break de jure segregation. Um, this happened mainly in the South. You don't see laws in the North. And, and these de jure segregation are obviously our Jim Crow laws and our black codes that you see in the South. So you could be thrown in jail. You could be prosecuted for breaking de jure segregation laws. Restrictive covenant is an agreement among neighbors not to sell or rent homes to African Americans or other racial minorities throughout the South. Because their fear was that if a minority group moved into the neighborhood, it would devalue what the home was worth. And so it would affect everyone else, not just you, everyone else in the neighborhood. So if there's 10 homes, one person decides to leave, and they rent their home to a minority group, the other nine homes are all of a sudden going to lose their value and will make it impossible for them to leave. This happens in some areas, uh, like in Dallas, Texas. Um, there was one neighborhood that was very affluent, um, very white. Um, it was called the Dallas Carter neighborhood. If any of you guys have seen Friday Night Lights, the movie, I love that movie. Remember, it's only one of two movies I've ever cried in. Um, it talks about Dallas Carter School playing... Um, Odessa in the state championship, which is actually false. They play in the state semifinal, but it's a lot better in the movie to say they play in the finals against each other. Well, in that movie, Dallas Carter is an all-African-American school pretty much. When, when you're looking at their athletes, what happened was in the 1980s, it was pretty much an all-white school district. And then you started to see people selling off their homes to minority groups. Well, then, because one or two people did it, everyone was doing it. Um, because they were afraid of the minorities moving in, devaluing their homes. And these were, we're talking about like, you know, half a million dollar homes, extremely nice neighborhoods. Um, and so obviously this restrictive covenant was put into places in like the South to try and stop this from occurring. Now, our last one for today, segregation and marriage. Uh, 11 Southern states passed laws against miscegenation. Um, this is interracial marriage. And so, you know, you got to think, these are deep southern states, the states that fought in the Civil War, that are trying to prevent minorities from marrying whites, all right? Um, and so, this was a lot of times by practice or custom, and then sometimes it was by law this was enforced. Some states outside the South also banned interracial marriage, so you got to think of places like in the West, interracial marriage between whites and people of Asian descent, or in the Southwest, people of white and Hispanic descent. Uh, and so you're seeing this all over, and it's not just in the South, but people are going to gravitate more towards it because it's being influenced and issued in the South.
It also prohibited marriage of whites and Asians or whites and Native Americans um, throughout the United States. So multiple groups are being segregated here. Obviously, the most affected and the one that we talk the most about is obviously African Americans because it's a higher population. But other minority groups are going through similar problems, okay? And you have to understand that. Now, that is our last slide. We're going to get more into segregation in our day five lecture on Wednesday. Um, quick reminder, make sure you're ready tomorrow for your quiz. Log in, take it on Canvas. You do not have to reshare your documents every single day with me. Uh, I put that on the discussion board um, and in my uh, calendar notes. But once you share it once, I'll be able to check it. Make sure um, you're, you're staying on top of it. Get ready for that writing assessment on Friday. Okay? Ooh, stay off the keyboard, bud. All right? Um, and other than that, guys, keep giving me questions. Keep giving me feedback. I will stay in touch. I'll do whatever I can to help you guys out. Um, you know, we're getting closer to spring break, so I hope you guys are ready for that. You guys get a week off, get time to relax, you know, get out, have some fun. Hopefully it gets nice, it gets warm, and stops raining a little bit. Um, but outfit matching again, I'm always on fire. Um, miss you guys like crazy. Um, we'll get back into this here soon, hopefully. Um, but keep your heads up. Uh, if you need anything, let me know. Shoot me an email uh, and get ready for day five because after day five, it'll be your lecture Q&A response. So keep bringing me the questions or else it'll be really short. Need those questions by Thursday, all right, guys? All right, take it easy. Have a great Tuesday. Go Pacers.